If you've been following Starship from the very beginning, you'll know that its nose cone has been changed very differently from the original. The first Starship nose cone looked incredibly rough and scabrous, not like something that could even survive a journey into space. The nose cone that SpaceX produces now looks much more becoming and more refined and, well, looks like smoother metal walls. The layout is also much tighter. So how did Starship's nose cone go from looking like this to this in just a few years? What SpaceX has done with that Starship nose cone is completely unbelievable and unlike nothing else. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The nose cone is considered one of the most essential parts of an orbital rocket. Basically, a nose cone is known as the conically shaped forwardmost section of the rocket. It is designed to modulate oncoming airflow behaviors and minimize aerodynamic drag. The first point that meets the air is the nose cone at the front end of the rocket. The amount of air resistance that opposes a rocket's motion depends mainly on the nose cone shape, the rocket diameter, and the rocket speed. Elon Musk, therefore, focused a lot of resources on perfecting the Starship nose cone. Firstly, the most obvious thing that any of us can notice is that the Starship nose cone exterior is much smoother. This is related to the welding technique. In the past, SpaceX would produce a series of thin stamped sheets or gores of steel, and once aligned on custom-built jigs, each one of the gores would be welded together to form a slightly conical ring. Five total rings would be assembled, each narrower and more conical than the last. The five sections would then be stacked one by one and welded together along their circumferences. Altogether, something like 120 complex vertical welds would be needed just to assemble the most basic structure of the nose, followed by four or five no less complex circumferential welds to turn those sections into one cone. SpaceX's upgraded design seeks to simplify that process, mainly by increasing the size of the gores. Aside from modestly reducing the number of longitudinal sections needed to form the cone, SpaceX has also reduced the number of stacked sections from five to two, slashing the total number of gores needed by at least a factor of two or three. While not quite as substantial, the same simplification also reduces the length of vertical and circumferential wells that need to assemble the nose cone. Besides, everything really became better when SpaceX moved on to laser welding for the Starship nose cone. Laser welders feature a fiber laser. These types of lasers are more than perfect for welding parts and machinery made of stainless steel. But in order to really improve the strength of each weld, another process has to be done. You see, when Starship stainless steel is produced in its factory, it goes through a process called cold rolling. That's the process of strengthening steel by changing its shape without using heat. Instead of heat, mechanical stress is used to change the structure of the metal. Strain hardening can then increase the metal's strength by up to 20% and can also improve a metal surface finish. Interestingly, this has the added benefit of smoothing the finish of the welds and improving the nose cone look. Until then, we can still see a beautiful masterpiece as it is today. Besides, Starship's nose cone has actually become pointier than original. Elon Musk revealed on Joe Rogan's podcast that the British comedy film The Dictator was a source of inspiration for the Starship nose cone. Musk said movies influenced him in creating outrageous designs. It's not the first time Musk allowed a silly idea to influence his work, and it won't be the last. Musk cited the scene in which Cohen's Admiral General Aladdin, the authoritarian ruler of the fictional nation of Wadaya, assesses the missile that his engineers created. The missile has a blunt head which displeases Aladdin. It is too round on the top. It needs to be pointy. Round is not scary. Pointy is scary. Starship, the 165-foot-tall, 50-meter spacecraft that SpaceX is developing to take people and cargo to Mars and other distant destinations, was also originally supposed to have a relatively blunt head, Musk told Rogan. But the SpaceX chief, consciously channeling his inner Aladdin, told his engineers to make Starship more pointy. You literally told them to make Starship more pointy because of the movie The Dictator? A chuckling Rogan asked. Yep, and they know it too, Musk replied with a laugh. It's not like they're unaware of it. I thought it would be funny to make it more pointy, so we did. Rogan then asked if pointiness gives Starship an aerodynamic edge. It's arguably slightly worse, Musk said, spurring laughter from both men, but he added, it looks cooler. 
and that's an important detail in the Starship nose cone. In addition, there's a few small but visible changes on Starship's forward flaps. Much like a skydiver can tweak their body, arms, and legs to control their orientation and altitude, Starship uses two pairs of forward and aft flaps to achieve a very similar level of control. According to Musk, to improve the moment arm of Starship's forward flaps and reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics, SpaceX is going to shrink those forward flaps further, move them closer together and more towards the tip of Starship's nose and angle them towards the ship's leeward side or the back. Those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the ship's flaps to prevent superheated plasma and gas from reaching sensitive components. The change seems to have been started since Ship 21. And starting with S-24, the methane header tank will be relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift the center of gravity even further forward. With the upgraded nose cone that'll debut on the same ship, fully assembling a nose cone will now take two or three stacks down from five, and fully assembling a Starship will take six stacks down from seven. While obviously not a major redesign, the changes will significantly simplify and thus potentially speed up Starship assembly, which would have additional positive follow-up impacts on wiring, plumbing, and heat shield installation. Finally, the most noticeable point is that the current nose cones are covered with heat shield. You can see this is a picture of SN8 and S24. The heat tiles are designed to protect the rocket during atmospheric entry. The ship would enter Mars atmosphere at a speed of around 16,777 miles per hour. However, one problem is that Ship 24's heat shield still fails during ground testing. So, a great deal of progress has been made fixing those problem tiles in the last month, and SpaceX has also more or less completed the tile installation on the angular aero covers that protect Starship's flap mechanisms, requiring dozens of custom tiles with complex nose cone shapes and curves. Hopefully, the latest designs at the nose cone will help Ship 24 complete its first orbital flight perfectly. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas about today's episode in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.